Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com. A few years ago, I made a pair of videos inspired by Randy Kane's concept of the practical rifle. These are loosely defined as traditional bolt action hunting rifles that are lightweight and quick handling with low power optics. It's essentially a spin off of Jeff Cooper's scout rifle concept, but instead of being defined by a strict list of specifications, the practical rifle hardware is more flexible based on the user's context. I have gotten a ton of requests over the years to revisit this topic. That is something I would love to do because it's a lot of fun to shoot bolt guns fast, but I really just don't have anything else to say about that topic. The practical rifle concept is interesting because it forces us to look at bolt actions from the perspective of self-defense or long-term survival. It's a thought-provoking idea, but it's really not all that practical for most of us on a day-to-day -day basis. If I were to take that term practical rifle at face value, I would end up with something a lot more like this, which is the rifle I actually wanna talk about today. This is what I'm gonna call the backyard sniper rifle. It's really just a suppressed bolt action 22 that I use for pest control. We have a vegetable garden and we raise chickens. Uh, that tends to attract small mammals that wanna eat our veggies and eggs. And sometimes the best way to prevent them from doing that is to shoot them in the face. Over the years, my trusty backyard sniper rifle has helped me dispatch rats, rabbits, uh, chipmunks, and raccoons. We live in a neighborhood in the county where there is a good amount of space in between the houses. It's enough that it's both safe and legal for me to do that, but our neighbors are close enough that I try to do it as quietly as possible. Very few firearms make as little noise as a suppressed bolt action 22. Of course, I own carry guns and home defense guns that fortunately I have never had to actually use for their intended purpose. I do hunt very occasionally, not often enough to call myself a hunter by any stretch. This 22 is really the only gun I own that actually gets used on a semi-regular basis for shooting anything other than paper and steel. In my world, that makes it a true practical rifle. Let's take a look at the hardware and then I'll talk about why I've set up this gun the way I did. The rifle itself is a Savage Mark II FVSR chambered in 22 long rifle. I replaced the factory stock with a Boyd's wood stock paired with a trigger guard and a magazine plate from DI Products. For the optic, I've got a Vortex Diamondback 2 to 7 by 35 rimfire scope. The suppressor is a Silencer Co. Sparrow. On the forend is a Black Hawk Swivel Stud to Picatinny adapter to accommodate the Streamlight TLR1HL. And finally, the sling is from Tab Gear. Now, if I had to guess, a bunch of you guys are shaking your head at this and wondering why I need to hang all this junk off my rifle just to shoot rabbits in the backyard. I could have used my granddaddy's 80 year old tube fed 22 from Sears and it would kill him just as dead. And there are probably just as many of you from the precision rifle crowd turning your nose up at this thing because it's a cheap piece of junk. You're both right, but I don't care. Uh, this is one case where I am definitely not suggesting anyone follow my example. This gun was configured for a specific practical purpose, but it's also just an excuse for me to play around so I do what I want. The Savage Mark II series has been around for a long time with dozens of variants made. The FVSR version has a heavy fluted 16 inch barrel, a threaded muzzle, uh, it's got a Picatinny rail and also this extra large bolt handle. I guess it's styled to kind of look like a, a tactical bolt action. Honestly, that's not really my thing. I do like the big bolt handle, but I could do without the heavy barrel. But I bought this gun nine years ago, and uh, at the time, it was one of the only 22s on the market that came from the factory with a threaded muzzle. Fortunately, suppressors are much more popular now, and we have a whole lot more options for suppressor ready 22 rifles than we did back in 2013. If I were to do it all over again today, I don't know for sure that I would ultimately choose this particular rifle, but I would consider it. It's quiet, it's accurate, and it's reasonably priced at around $260. The biggest flaw for me was the hollow plastic factory stock. It was very light, which made the rifle feel front heavy, and the comb height was just not tall enough 
for getting a proper uh, cheek weld with a scope. So I replaced it with this Boyd's Pro Varmint stock. It came unfinished, so I had to stain and finish the wood. I also cut it down a bit to give me a 12 and a half inch length of pull, which is ideal for me. In 2013, this stock was a bargain at 80 bucks, but the price has since gone up to 180 bucks. You also have to buy a separate uh, trigger guard and uh, magazine plate. Uh, the parts that came with the original stock don't fit, so that's another $46. When you add that to the cost of the gun, for the same price, you could have started out with a slightly nicer bolt action 22, and it probably wouldn't need a stock upgrade. That said, I am very happy with this rifle and stock combo. The stock really elevates this little rifle to a new level. It no longer looks or feels like a budget level gun. Uh, it, the stock does add some weight, but the balance and the comb height are both much improved. The Savage feeds from detachable magazines that hold either five or 10 rounds. Uh, I mostly use the 10 round mags at the range. At home, I always use the five round mag because the uh, lower profile makes the gun just easier to carry and it also doesn't get in the way when I'm shooting. The Vortex Diamondback 2 to 7 is a pretty decent rimfire scope. I just upgraded to this one uh, last year. I had been using a very old Burris 2 to 7 power scope that had probably the worst eye box of any optic I've ever seen. Uh, you don't see many 2 to 7 power scopes anymore, but I think it's a really useful magnification range. They tend to be smaller and lighter than the more popular 3 to 9 power scopes. Uh, they're also lighter and more affordable than like the 1 to 6 or 1 to 8 power scopes. The Diamondback is definitely not the highest quality glass aiming at a bullseye at the range. I can tell I am looking through a sub $300 optic. Practically though, it does exactly what I need it to do, which is to help me ensure that the tiny thing I'm aiming at 25 to 50 yards away is actually a rat's head and not a rat shaped tree stump or rock or something like that. The Picatinny rail up here and the uh, Streamlight TLR1 are also fairly recent additions to the rifle. I only clamp the light on when I actually need it. Uh, some of the critters that like to bother my chickens don't actually come out until after sunset. Uh, because of the contour of the stock, the uh, beam doesn't quite run parallel to the barrel, but it's a wide enough beam that that's not been a problem so far. The Blackhawk Picatinny rail up here, uh, it attaches to the extra sling stud that's up here that would normally be used for a bipod. I actually have no idea where I got this. I just uh, found it in a box of random accessories that I had in my garage. I don't think Blackhawk actually makes them anymore, but it does look like GG and G has a similar adapter. The Silencer Co. Sparrow was one of the best 22 cans on the market when I got it nine years ago, and it's still a popular option today. As far as I know, the basic design hasn't changed much in that time. It adds just six and a half ounces to the rifle. With subsonic ammo, it is ridiculously quiet. It probably makes less noise than my staple gun. Suppressed bolt actions and lever actions are always gonna be a little more quiet than semi-autos in the same caliber, but for 22s, the difference is minimal. Uh, you'd have to be pretty close to the gun to notice a difference, I think. But bolt actions also have a slight edge in terms of uh, accuracy to cost ratio. My Savage seems to really like the Ely 38 grain subsonic hollow points. I shot a few groups the other day and this was my first five shot group with that load, a half inch at 50 yards with four of the five rounds making a single hole. That is not bad for a budget grade rifle. You can get that kind of accuracy with a semi-auto, but probably not with an entry level model unless you do some work to it. When I'm shooting at backyard pest, I want them down in one shot and I don't want them running off to die in my neighbor's yard. So I almost always go for headshots and I can do that because I know the rifle is capable of making it happen and it hasn't let me down so far. The only real downside to this setup is the weight. Out of the box, the rifle weighed about five and a half pounds with all this stuff on it. Uh, it's 8.7 pounds loaded. That is pretty hefty for a rimfire. If I was walking around in the woods with it for hours at a time, 
I would want something a lot lighter, but for how I'm using it, the weight really is not a major concern. So there you have it. That is my idea of a true practical rifle. It does exactly what I need it to do, and it also happens to be a lot of fun. Uh, throw a bipod on it, and it's ideal for teaching kids or nervous first-time shooters. It's just a overall useful gun to have around. If you've got your own version of a practical rifle that you've set up for your needs, tell us about that in the comments. And when you need some ammo, be sure to get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.